Executive Alsa Brooks. Congratulations on your DNC speech. It was really great. Oh, thank you. Oh my gosh, it was so exciting to um, to represent Marylanders. I was at that convention 32 years ago for the first wow. time as a college student and I was working as a volunteer. And so it was the thrill of a lifetime to go from working as a volunteer, standing on the floor checking credentials to actually standing on the stage 32 years later, speaking to to uh, to Americans. It was incredible. Yeah. Well, then let's just start there. In your speech, you talk a little bit. There's something I didn't know about you is your history with Kamala Harris. And uh, talk a little bit about how you first met her and her influence um, on your life. In 2009, I actually read an article um, about Kamala in Essence magazine, and they were describing this book she had written uh, called Smarter on Crime. And I love the strategy she discussed in that book. I talked about the fact that we it was a false choice between being tough on crime um, and, and basically we should be smart on crime. Um, so after that, I was talking about her on the campaign trail because I was running for state's attorney at the time. And two days after I won the election, I get a call, pick the phone up and it's Kamala Harris. And she said, you know what? Congratulations. Just tell me what I can do to help. And we have since then been friends. She's been a wonderful mentor. She's obviously a tremendous role model. And it's just been um, really great to, to have known her over these last, it's been 14 years. Isn't that incredible? Uh, now you're the Democratic nominee for US Senate for Maryland. Uh, what are your major uh, issues that you wanna work on uh, in the US Senate? You know, economic opportunity is the number one issue um, that I've heard as I've had a chance to talk to Marylanders. Um, they're concerned about making sure that we bring back the kind of infrastructure, the kinds of investments in internet and roads, bridges, transportation, um, to make sure we're attracting jobs and increasing income. I've done this as county executive. So for example, um, I was really instrumental in attracting back to Maryland, the FBI, national FBI headquarters. That's an example of what I'll do as a Senator. Uh, we're bringing back 7,500 jobs, but also attracting to our state cybersecurity, technology jobs. So economic opportunity is the number one issue, um, as well as freedom. So women's rights, um, the Women's Health Protection Act is something is, is probably the first piece of legislation I'd like to co-sponsor to codify in federal law a woman's right to choose. Um, and also we'll be working uh, really hard as well um, to make sure that we are um, increasing access to health care uh, and making sure that we um, also uh, make sure our communities are safe, you know, really fighting against gun violence, uh, passing sensible gun legislation to ban, for example, assault weapons and making sure that we're removing ghost guns from our streets and, and keeping keeping people safe. You know, in America, uh, the number one way that a child dies is by gun violence. I'm the mother of a 19 year old and I cannot tell you how many mothers I have held in my arms um, whose children have been killed. And so this is a very personal issue as mothers, as fathers, uh, whose children have been killed. And so I'll be working really hard to protect our families and our children. Um, now you're running against Larry Hogan, who describes himself as a moderate. Um, why don't you lay out for people what the difference between having Larry Hogan in the Senate and having you in the Senate in terms of the balance of power and all the things that could, could happen or not happen in a potential Harris administration? You know, well, first of all, Larry Hogan's policies have not been moderate. I don't know what he feels in his heart, um, but I can tell you that he vetoed, for example, abortion care legislation in our state. Um, and when he was overridden by the legislature, he withheld the funding for it. He's a person who um, also voted against uh, waiting periods, um, sensible waiting periods for, for guns. He uh, refused to sign legislation that banned um, ghost guns in our state. So he's, his record is not so moderate. Uh, and so maintaining the majority in the Senate is going to be important. He was attracted to the race by Mitch McConnell. Um, and so he would be joining a caucus of people that are led by Donald Trump. Uh, that includes Lindsey Graham, Ted Cruz, Mitch McConnell. Uh, and these are the people who, if they were given the majority, would control the agenda for our country. So maintaining the majority is going to be most important uh, to align uh, with people whose values more, are more reflective of Maryland. I'll be there voting against gun violence and, and voting for sensible legislation. I'll be voting to preserve voting rights. This is something that the Republicans um, do not believe in. I'll be, the, the 51st vote will also help us to reform the filibuster uh, so that we can get through civil rights legislation and other important legislation. And I'll be also 
Uh, the 51st vote will also confirm Supreme Court justices. Uh, and that is very important. We've seen these courts uh, have a concerted effort to roll us back, the immunity decision, the Chevron decision that will affect climate change. Um, and so, you know, it's really important. Me and Larry Hogan belong to two caucuses and, and have a set of ideology and policies that are so different from each other. And I'll be there. Uh, and the 51st vote is going to be really important to also give Kamala Harris, uh, as our president, the ability to get her agenda done. Uh, that's going to be really important. The Inflation Reduction Act was a big thing uh, under the Biden, a big accomplishment of the Biden-Harris administration. Are there things you want to do in terms of building on the sort of investments in the in the country that uh, you would pursue in the U.S. Senate? Yes, the Inflation Reduction Act was really transformational historic legislation. Uh, one of the things that it did was to allow Medicare to negotiate directly with big pharmaceutical companies so we could cap the out-of-pocket cost of prescription drug medications. Uh, it also allows insulin to be capped at $35. Um, and it is, of course, a climate bill that is you know, once in a generation. But remember, every single Democrat voted yes to the Inflation Reduction Act, and every single Republican voted no. So if we allowed my opponent and his party to gain a majority in the Senate, that's the kind of legislation that would have never happened. We know as well, you know, and so I want to build on the Inflation Reduction Act uh, to protect the climate, uh, to continue to uh, make health care more affordable and to grow this green economy uh, that will benefit our country and benefit our, our children who are looking uh, to have economic opportunity. But to do so, you mu we must maintain uh, the majority in the Senate because the, the view of our country in the future couldn't be any more different. And Republicans have been there to block um, and to otherwise cause uh, um, all kinds of, you know, gridlock. And I'll be there trying to move us forward, not going backwards. Wow. Well, that's a great note to end on. Uh, Executive Elsa Brooks, congratulations uh, on your speech and your nomination and good luck in the race. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Take care.